Chris, as you and Mario Gabelli look at this transaction, is there any way the government can block it? Oh, sure. There's always a way the government can block it, but there's no statutory barrier to this transaction. You know, the assumption is that bigger is badder, and that's not necessarily the case. Certainly the FCC is going to look at this hard, and they'll take their pound of flesh. That's what they're supposed to do. They take their pound of flesh. Obviously, Comcast is being proactive. What is Brian Roberts' to-do list in the coming days to mollify politicians? Well, they've gotten out in front of it. This Actually, I have deja vu. This reminds me of four years ago when they made the offer for NBC. That, in my opinion, was a much more controversial deal in involving a vertical consolidation. But, uh, you know, you saw a lot of the same things. They got out ahead of it. They've offered to divest 3 million subs to extend the um, commitments they made in the NBC deal to the Time Warner Cable uh, subscribers. So, you know, obviously they're a very powerful lobbying force in Washington, and, and they're going to be busy. Chris, you've tallied up a list on the winners and losers from this deal. Clearly, Comcast and Time Warner Cable uh, benefit big time, given how their share prices reacted. What about on the losing side? Well, so Charter uh, came into this with uh, a very good organic growth prospects, terrific management, tax assets, and they had the opportunity to benefit most from increasing scale. And the best way for them to get to scale was to buy Time Warner Cable. That doesn't look like it's going to happen, although I wouldn't totally count them out. We could talk about that. Um, so they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and uh, maybe do this in pieces. So it doesn't look great for, as, as good today, uh, today that it did a few days ago for Charter. Chris, uh, Comcast historically has raised prices about 6%. Uh, is that going to uh, be a negative for the FCC as it looks at this? Well, yeah, that, that, they, uh, they, the cable companies certainly have pricing power on the broadband side, and, and they've been actually fairly disciplined in that, and they've offered, of course, more in the way of services uh, for, for those price increases. Um, so they'll, they'll have to balance that. The great fear here, or, or the, the holy grail for cable investors, is the ability right. to price on a usage basis. Chris, way in Washington, the balance between the haves, who are sophisticates, who have all their fancy to toys, including broadband and high-speed Internet, versus too large a part of America, which is going at old-time media speed. Who will the politicians listen to? <laughs> well, you know, a, a focus of the Obama administration certainly was uh, extending broadband availability to all, and that's and that's been happening. Uh, broadband uh, penetration obviously has been increasing. Uh, Comcast has uh, made an effort to uh, make sure it's available to lower-income individuals, and uh, that's certainly going to be one of the big considerations in this deal.